morning. I'm really excited to be back with you for Kids Corner. It was a couple weeks off between snow and communion. It's been a wild ride, but all that matters is we're here now and I'm so excited to be here. Now, if you're here in person, I would ask you individually, how old you are. Now, when you're a kid, that's not an offensive question, but be thinking, how old are you? So, do you want to stay that age forever? I remember being seven and wanting to be 10. And then when I was 10, I wanted to be 13. When I was 13, I wanted to be 16 and so on and so forth. But what are some good things about the age you are now? Well, some good things about the age I am now is I'm old enough to decide when I want to go to bed, when I want to wake up, and I can decide what I want to make for dinner, and I can drive myself where I want to go. Sometimes those things backfire, like when I eat cake for dinner, but most of the time, that autonomy is a good thing. What are some reasons you'd like to be a different age? One of the things I like about getting older is I learn new things every day. I'm always growing into hopefully more and more of the person that God has designed for me to be. So what are some things that you need to grow? If you want to make it to the next stage, if you want to grow up, get bigger, get stronger, what do you need? Well, you're going to need food. Everybody's got to eat. And hopefully you're eating some vegetables in amongst all the other things that you're eating. You need clothes because as you get bigger, your clothes, you know, don't always fit anymore. So you'll need new clothes. You need a place to stay so that you're safe. You're not exposed to the terrible weather that we've had this week in the past couple months. Those are just some of the things you need. But do you get those things for yourself? You know, chances are you can walk to the kitchen and make yourself a sandwich if you want, but you probably didn't buy the ingredients. You And you can make sure that you get to sleep at night, but you probably didn't pay for your bed or pay the mortgage on the house that you're living in. And someone else is paying for the clothes that you wear as well. We need help. So how does that apply to what we believe? Well, just like you need someone to help you with a place to live and food and driving to where you need to go, we need people to pray for us and to teach us and to help us learn when we do something wrong. We need other people to point us to Jesus and help us get to know him better. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we go any further, let's read today's passage in John 1. We're going to read 35 through 51 together, and then we're going to come back to what I've been talking about. So in your Bible... And it says, the next day again, John, this is talking about John the Baptist, was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what are you seeking? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two heard, who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. So there's a lot here, but I'm actually going to rewind all the way to verse 35, and I want to talk about one word, and that word is disciple. Now, we use a lot of words, there's a lot of words here in church that we use over and over again, things like worship, holiness, disciple, and it's important for us to know what those words actually mean instead of just throwing them around. So I want to define this for you. I looked at a lot of different definitions, but one that I thought made a lot of sense is the Westminster Dis Dictionary of the Bible says it is a word used of any, of all, of who whatever age who in faith received the master's divine teaching. That means anybody of any age who believed what Jesus said. Mind's Expository Dictionary of the New Testament tells us it's not just a student or a listener, or, but an imitator, a follower, or in other words, a doer. This ties into when Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be imitators of him as he imitates Christ. The men John's telling us about here in his story in John 1 had the opportunity to know Jesus personally. Jesus was a human on the earth at that time. They walked with him. They lived with him. They ate with him. And, you know, they spent all this time with him. They saw when he died and rose again, and they told others about him. While Jesus no longer walks the earth as a human, we can still know him personally like these disciples did and tell others about him. I want to go back and talk about um, 
Andrew, who goes back and tells his brother, found this guy, Jesus, we gotta follow him. We can be doing that to other people. And there's people that do that for us. So what does this have to do with growing up? Well, just like your parents help you grow bigger by making sure you have food and clothing and a safe place to live, we need that kind of help to go as a Christian too. Just like these men knew Jesus personally and then told others about him and helped them get to know him better, we need people to do that. Just like Andrew did to Peter, we need people to help us like that. So to help you out, I want to tell you about some of the people, just a few, who have helped me grow as a Christian. Buckle in. There's five whole different people I'm going to talk about here. But some of these are people in my own family. Growing up, my mom and my dad taught me how to talk to God by praying with me every night before I went to bed, and they prayed for meals too. They made sure to tell me about God and what his word tells us about who he is and what he's done. They've helped me grow by making church a priority. We came almost every week unless you were sick, teaching me how to pray pray, and letting me ask questions and learn more about God. Another important person who's helped me grow as a Christian is my Nana. When we would go on vacation together every summer, we'd spend a whole week, all 23 of us in one house, and every morning, me and all 12 of my siblings and cousins would go and gather in my Nana's room, and she would read us a Bible story and help us memorize some scripture together. To this day, my Nana still prays every single day for not just her four kids and their four spouses, but also for her 13 grandkids, their spouses, and now their kids as well, her great grandkids. She has helped me grow by teaching me the power of prayer and of Bible memorization. Sometimes the people who help us grow aren't part of our earthly family, but part of our church family. So I'm sure right now, this is a very, very old picture. You can tell by the quality, but the people I want you to notice are all the way on the left. It's Dave and Deb Schoen. This picture is from when I went to Mexico with them when I was in high school. But in addition to that trip, which they led, Deb taught me as a discipleship team leader. And she also taught as we were doing, I was part of the teens musicals and I volunteered for the kids musical as well. And I got to learn from her there. Pastor Schoen was actually teaching at day camp way back when I was a camper back in the day. But in addition to that, he led that trip to Mexico. He counseled Nick and I when we were engaged, and he's the one that married us. Dave and Deb Schoen have taught me that one of the ways that we can know Jesus better is by loving others the way he did and teaching others about him. Sort of similar to that, another member of the church family that's helped me grow is Annette Coons. Annette served as my D team leader every single spring for all of my high school career. And then when I graduated from high school, she made sure every time I was home from college to get together with me and my other friend who had been part of D team together and just check in with us and see how we were doing and see how our walk with God was doing. And after that, you know, I got to be an intern. I got to help her with day camp. And then when I started my job here at Bethel, she's helped me every step of the way. So Annette has taught me, and she's brought me closer to Jesus by telling me repeatedly that we need to love the unlovely, the people that are hard to love and difficult to get along with. And she's also taught me that we need to take care of the little ones in God's church. And sometimes the people who help us grow are our friends. The other woman in this picture I'm showing you right now in the middle is Jamie Hartz. We met all the way back in youth group when I was 15, and now we're both youth leaders. And we've been on at least five missions trips together. She was also in that Mexico picture. And she's the one that introduced me to my husband, Nick. Jamie has helped me grow closer to Jesus by showing me the importance of prayer and what meeting with God daily through reading his word and praying to him can do. These are just some of the people that have helped me grow. Chances are, if you're an adult sitting in this church service, a lot of you have helped me grow as well. But I want to ask, who are you following that's helping you grow closer to Jesus? Is it a, fa is it a family member? A Sunday school teacher? And my last question is, if you told someone the same thing Paul's saying in 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, if you said to them, follow me as I follow Christ, would you be worth following? Are you following Jesus? And all you need to do is, to follow Jesus is believe that you're a sinner and the things that you've done separate you from God. If you want to be friends with God again and fix that relationship, you need to believe you can't fix it on your own. But Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and covering our sins has made a way for us to know God. So that's all I have for this morning, but let's pray together and ask God to help us find people that can lead us closer to him, that we can follow like Paul or the disciples following Jesus and then people following them. And let's also pray and ask for God's help turning us into people that other people can follow to Jesus. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word and for the, the truth that's there, that we can know you through reading it. We thank you that we can have a personal relationship with Jesus and we can know you through him and through what he did on the cross. And we thank you that being a Christian isn't something we have to do alone. It's not something we're isolated in. There's lots of other people in your family, here in our church, here in our own families sometimes, but all around the world as well. Help us find people that bring us closer to you and help us be people that bring other people closer to you as well. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.